Hi, this is Chris Heiser from Internet2 and University of Pennsylvania, and this is Grouper Training for End Users Light UI Rules. We'll introduce the topic of rules, assign a sample rule, and test that rule. So, how the rules fit into the overall grouper picture is um, we're going to use the Light UI to manage the attributes that define the rules and the rules um, basically live in the grouper API and will fire um, whether an action comes from web services or UIs or um, grouper shell or, or whatever and then the grouper loader um, will run a job at night that makes sure the rules are consistent if it's a rule that has a um, daemon job to do that for. So introduction to rules. Rules are triggered by actions in grouper and basically they're fired on the check part of the rule. And they can also have an if condition to make sure that something is true um, if the rule should proceed. And then once the check is fired the rule and the if condition matches then the then part of the rule uh, will occur. And um, the rules are configured by um, attributes on grouper objects. And these attributes can be edited by the um, light UI of grouper, which can be used by an end user. So if you Google grouper rules uh, for documentation and examples, you'll see um, more information about how they work and what's available. And this is the URL. So if you go to this URL, um, you can see more information about how the rules work and um, what some of the um, what things are available and then if you click on use cases um, you'll see um, some uh, examples of how to use rules for real-world um, reasons. Um, note that some rules or the built-in ones have a daemon component <clears throat> which means that um, uh, at night if there's a uh, way to check for consistency for that rule um, generally it runs daily at night um, then it will make sure that whatever the rule is is consistent for the group and I'll give an example of that later. So there are two ways to assign rules in grouper um, Really, you just need to assign the uh, the attributes to the objects. But basically, your central grouper admin can do this using GSH with um, uh, for the built-in rules. Um, it's very easy. There's just one uh, command that will add all the attributes and the values. And note that some rules must be done by your grouper admin because um, the rule has to run as a privileged user. So an example of that is inherited priv pri privileges on a folder. If you want certain privileges to be assigned to groups or folders when those groups are created inside a certain folder, for instance for an application, that has to run as group or system because other users are creating the objects and you don't have permissions to assign those privileges on the objects automatically, only um, the grouper system privilege user can do that. So um, some of the rules you need to ask your central grouper admin to uh, to add for you. And the other way besides GSH to um, to configure the rules is to do this via the UI. So the admin or a or a regular grouper user could do this via the UI um, or web services or whatever else but for this uh, training we're talking about the UI. So the rule we're going to do for an example is composite intersection. Um, basically grouper intersections have the problem that if the user is added to the require group in the future after they've been removed based on not being in the um, require group, for instance if they're not an employee anymore and they fall out of the application group and they become an employee in another department then they will be in the overall group again. Um, but maybe you want them to go through an intake process to get those authorizations again. So basically um, you could have a rule that does some checking to see if they're in the require group if they're an employee 
and once they're not an employee you could take them out um, so the composite uh, grouper composites intersection and minus in this case we're talking about um, an intersection because they have to be an employee and in the overall group um, they might have performance implications because basically you have to keep a couple of lists um, uh, of uh, the groups that um, the the group of users for the application and you have another list of employees and then you have another list of the overall groups with this rule with these rules you only need the two groups the group of users for the application and the employees group so um, the composite intersection rules are a rule on the overall group which checks the check part of the rule is when a membership is removed from the required group which could be employees um, then remove the member from the overall group and the second rule is a rule on the overall group which checks to see when a membership is added to the overall group then veto that action if the entity is not in the require group which could be employees so see the grouper wiki use cases for composite intersection and veto if not eligible and in order to assign um, rules in general you need the ATTR attribute um, privilege and ATR read privilege on the two rules attribute definitions from your grouper admin so if you have trouble seeing the rules to assign in the in your UI um, then you need to make sure that you have those two um, privileges and also um, you need to be using grouper 2.1.4 or later um, or else the admin needs to do it for you so uh, let's assign the attributes and values so I'm back on the grouper rules use cases wiki and I'm gonna click on composite ng intersection and this is gonna give the um, Java and GSH example and you can kinda read this to see what you need to um, assign um, basically in this case <coughs> we're gonna have a check type of membership removed so let's add that attribute first so I'll go to grouper I'm logged in as Harry Windsor in this test application who is an admin of the PTO admins group and I want to make sure that users of PTO admin are also uh, in the active employee list so if they're ever not an active employee anymore take them out of the PTO admin group and if anyone adds someone to the PTO admin group is not an active employee then veto that operation so I am going to go to the light UI manage attributes and permissions viewer assign attributes and I'm going to put an attribute on the group which is the PTO admins group and right now there are no attribute assignments found so I need to add the um, rule to that group and that rule basically now needs some metadata on it so I click this little arrow next to the attribute assignment and I can say add metadata assignment and now I'm just gonna type the word rule and it's gonna show me all the various uh, rules um, uh, attributes that can be assigned and basically I need the rule uh, It's hard to see this autocomplete it um, while I'm making this movie, but uh, we're going to assign the rule check type. And then we need a value on the rule check type. And the value for rule check type is membership remove. And this is because here we have rule check type membership remove okay once that attribute is assigned there will be a rule valid attribute and until this is T if it has an error message that means it's not valid and whatever the error is we need to fix that um, we already know there are a lot of different um, 
metadata attributes to assign, so we know we're not going to be there quite yet. Um, but uh, in this case, it says we need act as subject ID or act as subject identifier. And we can also do an act as subject source to make it um, better performance. So we're going to add another metadata assignment. And rule act as subject ID, we'll assign that. And then for the subject ID, we're going to put our own subject ID um, because when other people add members to the group or employees, we want this rule to run as us. Um, and that's the only value we can put in there. The other one we can do is uh, rule act as subject source ID. And if you know the source ID, it'll make the rule um, more reliable. So I can put um, JDBC here. If you don't know the source ID, you can ask your um, uh, group or sysadmin, or I think you can find it back in the admin UI when you do a search, specify data source. Um, these are all the uh, sources. And I guess the name isn't there, so you would have to ask your um, your group or sysadmin what the person source is or wherever your data is coming from. So we can go back to attributes. And now it says enter one and only one of then EL or then enum. So we need a then condition. Um, but we also have an if condition. So basically, if the membership is removed, uh, is the check, but um, where is it removed from? So let's try to look here again. Um, basically, we have a rule check owner ID or owner name. So if you have the group ID, that's probably better. If not, you can use the group name. So in this case, I'm going to go back to the employee group. <laughs> And I can either get this UUID or use this group name. In this case, I'll use the name just so it's easier to see. But I think you'll have better performance with the UUID. And then I'll come back to the attributes. And I can add a metadata assignment. for rule check owner name. And the value for that one is the name of the group that we're checking. So if a membership is removed from employee, active employee, and the other part of that is the entity that's removed from active employee has to be in the PTO admin group so so basically the if condition is this group has immediate enabled membership so I need to add that metadata And if all that happens, the then part is we want to remove the member from the owner group. And the owner group is the group where the rule is assigned. <laughs> so we've got one more piece to this. And at this point, rule valid says T, which means that this should work. So again, this is uh, the check type is a membership remove. 
the check owner is if it's removed from this group. The if condition is this group has immediate enabled membership and this group is the group where the um, attribute assign, is assigned, which is PTO admin, where the rules assigned. Um, and uh, this is going to run as me, and this is my source. And if all that happens, then remove the member from the owner group, which is the PTO admin group. So once someone is not an employee, they'll be removed from this group. So we can see that in action. Um, this user doesn't have access to the owner group, but I can log in as group or system. Um, or if you have access to both groups, you could do this. And basically, I'll do manage members here. And we see that Barry Brooks is a direct member. Maybe I'll add a new member. Barry Tarbuck. And if I go over to um, the employee group, I see that Barry Tarbuck is not a member, so I'll add them. And then, um, so this user is a member here. This user is a member of the PTO admin role. Barry Tarbuck. So now if I remove this user from the employee group, which may happen when they lose their job or change jobs or whatever, that rule has fired and removed the um, user from the PTO admin group. Okay, so the other part is if I add Barry Tarbuck here, it should veto that operation. Um, so right now, uh, well, you just saw me add Barry Tarbuck and it was okay, but I don't want to be able to add anyone to this group if they're not in the overall group. So I will add another rule that um, prevents that from happening. So basically, I'll go to the use case for veto if not eligible. And in this case, I'm going to have a check of membership add. So for PTO admin, I can add a new rule. And this is invalid because I don't have an act as subject ID. So the um, rule valid says invalid because we need to have the act as subject ID or act as subject identifier. So we will add um, that for Howie, which is my user ID, and JDBC is the source ID. So let's add. And um, so we need to know which group the membership is being added to that we're checking. So the check owner name would be um, the uh, overall group.
So if a group is added to PTO admin, then we need to have an if condition which says that a different group has no, um, in this case it says has no immediate enabled membership, but really we just want, uh, has no enabled membership, whether it's immediate or not. So we can add an if condition enum And the various values you can put in here uh, might not be exactly clear. Um, they're in the documentation. So a group has no. Okay. So a group has no enabled membership. And the group which has no enabled membership. the employee group and if there's no if the user is not an employee and you're adding them to the PTO admin group <coughs> then you want to veto. Now if you look at the rule valid, it says uh, rule then enum arg zero is the message key. Um, so basically you also need a, uh, a message key and or a name for this. So here's the message key for you must be a member of something else. And if this, um, if you want to get your uh, admin to put that in to the um, text of grouper, you can do that. Or you can just have a uh, um, text that will go on the screen. So we'll put this in there uh, for then enum arg zero. Entity in PTO admin must be a member of employee. And that doesn't exist till you talk to your admin. Um, but what we can do is just put some text in here. Now rule valid says true and this should work. So at this point, <clears throat> um, if there's a member added to the PTO admins group and they're not an employee, has no enabled membership, then veto. 
Okay. So um, this operation is not allowed. Entity and PTO admins group must be an employee. So now if we look at the admins group, that user was not added to the group. So for test the rule, we removed someone from the um, employees group. And we saw that they were removed from the overall group. We added someone to the overall group who was not an employee. And we saw that that was vetoed. And if you add the rule and things aren't consistent, for instance, you added these rules and there were people in the admins group who, who weren't employees before the rules were added, then the checks won't fire, but there's a daemon at night that will make sure it's consistent and remove people from the um, PTO group. And that's because they're built-in um, rules. Click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. Thank you very much. For more information, see the uh, info sheet, the demo server, or the online training home.